Get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month. You'll get unlimited access to the news you need to stay engaged and connected to your community. Visit DuluthNewsTribune.com slash subscribe now to get three months of local news for only 99 cents a month. Hello, Northlanders. It's Thursday, July 13th. I'm Wyatt Buckner with your Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S. Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now here's a look at today's headlines. A Wisconsin-based healthcare giant plans to join with St. Luke's. Aspires Health, which operates 17 hospitals, 75 clinics, and other health facilities in Wisconsin and in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, announced Wednesday morning it signed a letter of intent to join with St. Luke's, which operates a hospital in Duluth and another in two harbors, as well as other healthcare facilities in the Northland. The two healthcare systems hope to complete the deal by 2024. The combined organization will operate 19 hospitals and 130 outpatient facilities and employ 14,000 staff. Hospital leaders said the combined organization will have better access to capital, unified technology systems, larger scales and efficiencies, and, quote, a health plan focused on maximizing value for patients and employers, end quote. Communication staff at St. Luke's and Aspirus did not immediately return News Tribune requests for comment or further details. St. Luke's recently started construction on a $58 million, three-story addition to Building A at its Duluth campus, part of the $72 million second phase of its Health Forward initiative, which started with the construction of Building A. The expansion will consolidate cardiac care into one building. It is expected to be complete by the end of 2024. A man allegedly stated that he woke up from a dream and found himself shooting his own brother. Robert James Cope, 30, was charged Wednesday with six crimes, including attempted murder and assault, after the victim was gravely wounded by a single shot to the head at the family's Virginia home Saturday. Court documents indicate the bullet entered near the victim's ear and out his neck, apparently nicking his brain. He was airlifted to a Duluth hospital and survived his first surgery, but was said to be on a ventilator in the intensive care unit at the time he was charged. Cope, who has a history of assault and threats of violence, is on probation and was participating in the Range Mental Health Court program, according to St. Louis County Prosecutor Bonnie Norlander. The sibling's mother indicated there did not appear to be anything out of the ordinary prior to the shooting, telling investigators she had seen Cope go upstairs and then suddenly heard the shot. Cope has four felony convictions since 2015, three for threats of violence and one for domestic assault, and he remains on probation through September 2024. Judge Rachel Sullivan granted the prosecutor's request to set bail at $750,000 and also ordered Cope to be screened for a potential mental health evaluation. His next court appearance was set for Tuesday. Cope is charged with attempted second-degree murder, first-degree assault, two counts of second-degree assault, domestic assault, and possession of a firearm by a felon. Dan Williamson now joins us with a special guest. Thanks, Wyatt. I'm joined by one of our colleagues, the great Melinda Levine. Duluth News Tribune features reporter, and there's an article she's working on for Saturday's print edition of the Duluth News Tribune, and it's an article you can find online prior at DuluthNewsTribune.com. Melinda, this is an update from a story you've had out there previously, and some really good news. There's a pizza farm in Saginaw, and it's open. Yes, the pizza's on, folks. Uh, So John and Emily Beaton of Fairhaven Farm, they launched a Kickstarter last year, and They surpassed their fundraising goal. And over a year later, the pizza farm's open. So they built a pizza oven on site, but, you know, it didn't pass like regulations. So they had to build like another pizza oven food truck that they have now. And it's like 3000 pounds and they can cook a pizza in like two minutes. It's (laughs) it's amazing out there. That is amazing. Of course, people hear pizza farm just to set the record straight they don't grow pizza there but (laughs) (laughs) a lot of the stuff that you would find on a pizza they do grow what more could you tell us about that yes so like when photographer clint austin and i were out there on friday they had potted basil plants right by the pizza oven that they were putting on top of the pizza along with the tomatoes that they use in the pizza sauce they grow on site as well as like they had a an arugula garlic scape pesto from the garden. And, you know, really they said whatever they don't grow on site, they get from regional producers. So there's like chorizo and pepperoni from Northern Water Smokehouse, Italian sausage from Micro Acres, you know, everything. If you bite into that pizza, you're going to taste like 
the Northland. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> For takeaways, what was your biggest takeaway? And also, what do you hope our audience takes away from this? I think a big takeaway for this, it's a really cool idea. Like a pizza farm isn't a new concept. There are a couple in Wisconsin and around the country. This is the first in the Northland. And it's just a really cool idea for people. If you can't swing like a CSA share, you're able to go out to the farm, try some farm fresh veg on a really accessible food that everyone loves. You can get a garden tour. You can just spend time, meet the farmers, the people who are growing our food in the area. And it was just magical out there. Like there were kids playing and doing cartwheels and like families. And we went on a garden tour and got to taste all these different things like fresh beans off the, <laughs> off the plants. It was just, it was a really cool experience. And I hope our readers can just take away that we have people doing cool stuff in our area. This conversation is making me hungry. I have to ask, what is your favorite kind of pizza? My favorite kind of pizza is Supreme with all the stuff on it. <laughs> I'm the same. I go with Supreme. That's my top choice. But I did recently have macaroni and cheese on pizza. I didn't think that would be good. It was fantastic. So I'm open to all sorts of interesting combinations and flavors out there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, where do you stand on pineapple on pizza? Ooh, that's a tough one. My girlfriend loves it. Me, I will eat it, but sometimes I pick the pineapple off. <laughs> I'm with you on the no warm pineapple, please. <laughs> Well, Melinda, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you, Dan. And again, you can find Melinda's article in Saturday's print edition of the Duluth News Tribune. You can also find it online prior at DuluthNewsTribune.com and see some photos from photojournalist Clint Austin as well. Wyatt, back to you. Thanks, Dan. Now here's a look at your forecast brought from the News Tribune's Best of the Best Awards. Weather for the Duluth area today looking at partly to mostly cloudy skies and then tracking a chance of a light shower or two later on in the day. A little bit warmer, though. High temperatures getting back up into those mid-70s, low 60s overnight tonight, and then temperatures climb up into the low 80s for Friday with chances of thunderstorms. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist Robert Pointer. Thank you to the Best of the Best Awards for their support. The contest is an annual celebration of the best the Northland has to offer when it comes to businesses and organizations that make the Northland a better place to live. Nominations are now open and accepted until Friday as the first part of the competition. Voting will take place August 7th to August 21st. Nominate your favorites at DuluthNewsTribune.com. Reporting for today's episode was done by Joe Bowen, Tom Olson, and Melinda Levine. Thank you for listening to Duluth News Tribune Minute. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.